Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday afternoon, about 3 p.m. here, California time, July 3rd, 2024. Watching uh, a little interesting swarm of earthquake activity up here in the northern Cascadia Basin. Uh, got uh, a few earthquakes coming in here within the last couple hours. The largest, a 4.7. Really no main shake or for, uh, no main quake yet. Uh, our latest one in the mix here, a 4.0. Uh, also another one further out uh, away from the plate boundary itself. That was the main quake, but uh, it, well, I can't really say main quake, but it was the largest of the sequence of quakes here. Uh, and this one being away from the area. So we got some interesting activity stirring up out here across the northern end uh, of the Cascadia Basin. Of course, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, a major area of uh, seismic risk capable of producing upwards of a 9.0 or a greater earthquake here. And the last one was 324 years ago with the reoccurrence intervals roughly between 280 and about 450 years. Um, around that reading depends on who you ask. But uh, got, yeah, definitely some interesting activity. This activity comes following some movement down south here across the Gulf of California. It does look like we're seeing a little bit of uptick here, work its way up through California right now. And uh, the Makama Fault showed some activity. But watching this area, uh, it's on a, uh, looks like maybe a, a fracture zone up here. We're just off of this fracture zone. Let me uh, back out of here real quick and see where we're at. It's going to be in the area. Uh, what I need to do is add the uh, plate boundary map here going to be roughly in this area I believe uh, and that's you can see the other fracture zones down here the Blanco fracture zone this is the northern end of that area and it does look like some type of ridging going on out here so uh, potentially a divergent boundary but also some uh, some seamounts quite a few seamounts out there either way it's a mess of activity it looks like in that region and that's where we're seeing a little bit of earthquake swarming kicking up right now there in the uh, Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of Vancouver Island Range. Of course, again, the Cascadia runs here um, from about the Queen Charlotte Sound area down south into Northern California. The uh, trimmer map here, let me go over and check out the Cascadia trimmer here from yesterday. Showed us about 304 epicenters, mainly down here on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, this trimmer count has been uh, somewhat elevated here since about the end of May. We started getting uh, quite a bit of tremor stirring up here. Let's see what we got for the total tally in that time frame. About 16,000 epicenters of tremor in the Cascadia subduction zone. And uh, let's see here. Three streets. Past tremor. Uh, that's kind of interesting. It shows historically. Uh, past trimmer lines here and that's pretty much where we're at but we did see more trimmer down south than any other area up here across the region of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone so you know there's a couple areas that may not be showing some trimmer but uh, overall I think we're seismically uh, at risk here down on the southern end uh, with all the trimmer recently, but uh, something for sure is going on up here across the northern edge of the Cascadia Basin. And with this one quake literally uh, about 100 miles away from the swarm, it's a little odd. Let's see if this has been reviewed or not. It has been reviewed by a seismologist, so that will stick. Uh, let's see if these other earthquakes, uh, they've been reviewed as well. Uh, historical data out here tells us and shows us that uh, well, they get quite a bit of earthquake activity out here, but um, yeah, it's been a little while, definitely a little while since we've seen a swarm of activity out here. So whenever we get swarming uh, across, you know, potentially a major subduction zone here and regional stress out against the eastern areas of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate Boundary, got to be on guard for sure. Uh, the Tonga area, seeing quite a bit of deeper movement this morning. All three deep earthquakes there. That could lead to a further uptick there in the uh, Kermadec Trench southward or potentially some subduction zone uh, earthquake activity upstream here 
along that plate boundary. New Zealand's seen a, a handful of threes out here recently. But uh, anyway, I figured I'd jump on here and cover this real quick because it is uh, of some interesting activity going on out here. Could lead to something bigger. Uh, whether that's going to lead to, uh, you know, increasing pressure out here along the subduction zone level itself, it's possible. When you get the separation of the plates here, of course, that um, would be arrows pointing away from each other. That would add further strain here against this locked area. Uh, where the uh, a lot of the pressure would transfer to So we'll watch it folks and uh, report back on anything that changes throughout the afternoon uh, If not, then we'll definitely cover this a little bit more This evening in the uh, Wednesday night update stay safe out there and we'll catch you guys a little bit later